good evening everyone uh, on behalf of uh, pi chennai pi learn a to z of bakery uh, i'm here uh, this evening um first of all uh, uh, how many of you are comfortable with uh, english tamil because uh, these two languages is what uh, i prefer to mix and match and uh, speak today and uh, is everyone completely comfortable with english i can go ahead in english or uh, if somebody is in uh, need of tamil i can uh, mix and speak uh, just put a word uh, just mention as uh, tamil uh, so that i can mix and speak or i can straight away go ahead in english how do you feel uh, mr vishwa is there a uh, multicultural yeah mr vishnu is here Who would like to okay okay cool okay uh so let me have a, a blend of both <laughs> uh, that so, would be the best yeah fine okay cool so uh, me uh, started as a baker uh, for me uh, christmas is always special uh, wherever the city uh, wherever the bakery i am uh, we are very serious about uh, christmas and this uh, new year season because this is said to be the best uh, season for uh, even the food industry uh, especially for uh, bakery uh, and uh, uh, confectionery business uh, this is the season where a lot of um, uh, gifts and bakery goodies are exchanged at the end all the bakery business owners uh, get benefited <laughs> and all the people are happy uh, during the season so you can stop me any time or uh, put a word in the chat box uh, you can raise a question so let's keep it interacted or i keep on talking uh, uh, to you uh, in whatever fashion uh, that suits the best <clears throat> so so christmas uh, we have to start definitely with the plum cake um, uh, in india uh, or in, in around the world uh, they always uh, have this uh, cake mixing or the fruit mixing a uh, ceremony much before uh, christmas so this uh, this is very important and uh, very crucial um, uh, because uh, that that will show that uh, that bakery that particular bakery is uh, getting ready for christmas and uh, they also uh, show around their uh, variety of uh, dry fruits uh, being soaked in uh, uh, different types of liquors rums brandy or uh, all uh, alcohol so that it is getting macerated over a period of time so that their plum cake is going to taste the best and normally uh, it is also wiser to invite uh, localites uh, the people around uh, uh, the bakery around the town around the city uh, and uh, do a kind of a propaganda so that uh, uh, people get uh, distracted and attracted at the same time so that is uh, something very important so that uh, uh, they, they they can uh, seriously target their uh, plum cake sale obviously we will be giving offers different types of promos different types of uh, uh, posters being posted in their bakery and uh, online digital formats and things like that but still this is a tradition uh, people normally do a variety uh, when it's actually a huge volume of uh, uh, dry cakes uh, i mean dry fruits being chopped and uh, blended with a team of people children or uh, a community of people and then uh, these all calls are poured in and uh, mixed thoroughly so that they take that to maceration in small batches of uh, wax so that that dry fruit get well matured to make the plum cake uh, that is very important so that uh, that is uh, uh, creating a hype in the city as well as uh, that shows uh, something very nice is going to happen in their bakery so that is one thing and everybody has different varieties of uh, plum cake recipes that you can do by yourself and uh, we can give it an assortment of packing from small 10 rupees to 20 rupees to maybe per kg 500 or 1000 depending on your uh, uh, variety of uh, ingredient that you use and the percentage of dry fruits and nuts uh, you use you can price your uh, uh, bakery plum cake uh, or plum pudding uh, for instance uh, it's up to you it's totally up to you that is one uh, a key products for the season it means the plum cake will also be stored so sold over a period of time until the new year and the first week 
and that is a season where this uh, exchange of uh, gifts and big goodies uh, happens uh, in a country like uh, india it's uh, though we are not uh, very serious into uh, that tradition the christian community are very serious into that tradition at the same time uh, we being brothers to them and uh, we normally get the cakes or we buy the cake and give to them and things like that so that is about the plum cake and uh, many bakeries have also raised a beautiful uh, uh, habit of uh, creating uh, baked goodies uh, hampers this hamper will include a lot of stuffs uh, that is also advisable um each and every year uh, these hampers are getting novel and trendy with the different types of uh, uh, baked goodies uh, that also attracts uh, uh, the public and the crowd uh, to buy it it starts from a small uh, hamper to a large hamper and depends on the price and cost factors they include a variety of uh, stuffs uh, some of the stuffs uh, which i would like to suggest uh, uh, for your uh, christmas hamper especially with baked goodies is uh, not just uh, uh, the products that is made in your bakery uh, you can also blend in uh, some modern trade goods and also some kind of uh, you know uh um uh, products uh uh from uh, different uh, fmcg uh, products and the or blend irunda nalla irukum actually um ready made products plus your products uh, this both uh, uh, blended together uh, is more ad advisable because that makes it more colorful because by default when we take the natural baked products mostly it will be in mild brown and beige obviously the Uh, color coated uh, in terms of sugar and things like that are different but bakery product as such is brown so in order to induce some more attraction you can get some colorful modern trade products uh, and packeted uh, uh, other maybe nuts dry fruit this and that and things like that i can give you some example if you want to talk about your own product you can definitely make some wonderful almond rocks uh not for other kind of uh, pistachio cashnut rocks and things like that you can create uh, rice clusters with rice crispy clusters uh with some white chocolate or dark chocolate and you can wrap it around with uh, different colorful uh, uh leaves of uh, gold or uh, shiny blue or whatever color you feel like uh then comes uh, your variety of small colored macarons that can also add value to your hamper and assorted colored macaron i mean the french macaron which i meant um uh nama thoothukudi macaron is little different it is mostly in white and it's a combination of macaron and meringue uh what i am talking about is the french macaron the sand sandwiched uh, uh french macaron with a different uh, filling in it and uh, you can add an assorted cookies a uh, different types of cookies and even you can add a gingerbread or uh, different types of shaped cookies uh with some uh, artistic work on or done on that kind of a uh, christmas uh, tree or reindeer or santa claus or socks or something like that whatever uh, that is uh, more pertain to the christmas uh, festivity uh, those kind of uh, colorful uh, cookies can also be added and uh, you can also add some other uh, modern trade foods or fmcg things like the, even coffee different types of tea in tins in bottles and you can add some um uh, jams and jellies or peanut butter in jars and things like that and your products you can talk about uh, christmas stolen rich very rich christmas stolen uh, christmas stolen is a kind of a very interesting bread made out of a lot of uh, dry fruits and nuts and then it is glazed with uh, nice uh, butter and uh, sugar and things like that that's a wonderful product that can be used uh, as one of the christmas uh, goody and you can use uh, panettone bread that is also rich in dry fruits and uh, you can add uh, different varieties of uh, chocolate fudges truffles or uh, sugar coated cookies and uh, different varieties of stuffs like that all these things can go into a basket a large basket or small basket and you can wrap it around with your own uh, fashionable decoratives and you can sell it as hampers but uh, epimic when it comes to christmas uh, it is always better uh, that you create this hype much before the season starts preferably somewhere in the mid or later november you need to start creating or giving uh, the public some ideas that you are giving these uh, new christmas goodies in a country like uh, india 
there are different towns where sometimes Christmas is a happening uh, festival uh, season or some places uh, Christmas doesn't happen much. It depends, you know, a bakery owners speak so or say so like that. But it is also up to the bakery owners that uh, you create uh, this tradition of uh, uh, different types of uh, seasonal festivities, uh, different types of uh, goodies that you can create for the season, especially for the December and through the first week of January so that you can increase your sales. Uh, so when you, whenever you want to create this uh, uh, seasonal goodies, you also make uh, a public announcement or a kind of a propaganda or uh, the advertisement in terms of uh, kind of a creating a posters within your bakery uh, saying that these kind of stuffs are going to be present uh, for this season of uh, December and uh, late December to January and things like that. You can give yourself a, a nice offers for the guest and things like that. You can create a poster both physically as well as digital content. These days, Instagram, la, Facebook, la, you need to you know, uh, create a, a lot of hype. That is uh, very important. Um, uh, offers can be anything. It need not be dedicated to uh, the specific Christmas goodies, especially for New Year, you can create a culture of cutting cakes and things like that. And you can also give offers of 50% off, 10%, 20% off, or you buy one, you get one, or you buy one kg, you get half kg, or you buy a cake, you get some cupcakes free, this and that. You That's all up to you. That's all totally up to you. But you, it's, it's, it's a tradition that uh, you attract uh, people uh, for a better sales uh, during this uh, uh, Christmas and New Year. And it is also up to the bakery owners uh, to teach the crowd or to, to teach the town that uh, this uh, uh, season can be celebrated this way. Because uh, in Tamil Nadu, in many places, I hear that here, uh, Christmas tradition, we don't have a bigger sale on uh, Christmas Day or through the New Year. It is going to be just another uh, time of uh, other year and things like that but it is also up to the them to you know create this hive create offers and uh, give a lot of uh, 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 you know uh, hype to their own brand and uh, push the product so say for example uh, christmas and new year's sale uh, adds a great value uh, to your consolidated year long sale so you take this seriously and uh, you do a, a better uh, plan for the Christmas and New Year. Say, for example, it's okay, uh, immaterial uh, uh, under what circumstance you are, you try to decorate, uh, you, you keep yourself a lot of uh, uh, decoratives, especially for this season, so that you keep that uh, every December through January, and then you pack it up and use it for the next year. Once you buy it, probably you can use it for a few years or a couple of years, so that uh, you keep your uh, bakery occupied. When people get in uh, immaterial, what culture and religion they are, they get distracted and attracted uh, towards the decorations that you do. You keep yourself some kind of a you know, festive LED uh, lights being lit up beyond, I mean, uh, outside your stores and uh, you hang around a lot of uh, Christmas decoratives inside your store so that uh, even the kids get attracted and, you know, people get distracted and somehow you allure them uh, with a proper cost, with a proper cost and you give them a proper product. That is also very important. And uh, next, uh, yeah, uh, you can also reach to communities uh, gathering or uh, church or schools uh, related to your uh, new goodies or season specialities. And you can create a kind of a notice or a digital media and contents so that you can do a kind of a propaganda. Uh, if anybody is uh, interested in some questions uh, related to uh, this session or uh, in the middle, you can please uh, raise your hand or uh, kindly post a question in the chat box so that uh, I can answer it then and then because it has to be ask me anything. It's like not telling you everything. <laughs> so then, uh, yeah. And... Uh, Sometimes you always uh, give a set of products throughout the year uh, uh, in your bakery. 
uh, at least for this Christmas or from this time onwards, try to keep small tidbits of all the samples of new products that you are launching uh, this season or you want to push that product in particular. Uh, give it as a trial for tasting to everyone who enters your store. Or if you're having uh, your regular uh, client profile, you can even give a small bit of that as a complimentary much before your uh, season begins, more like November, you can do something like that. But it's already time this year, maybe you can follow these steps uh, during your next year, but still you can give uh, samples of your product. Say for example, you're launching some new type of uh, biscotti, uh, so you can give a sample of that to uh, whoever is entering into the store and if they are interested, they might buy that in a bigger volume or you can keep an array of samples of all the product that goes into a large gift hamper so that uh, they can buy it and uh, uh, take you. Okay, fine. I have a problem with the whole wheat bread problem or it doesn't usually rise as I want. Please assist. Okay. Uh, Mr. Godwin has asked for uh, how to uh, make a whole wheat bread rice. Okay, fine. To be very honest, uh, if at all we use a very natural wheat flour, um, it will have a lot of uh, fine husk ground to it or fine uh, external endosperm of the wheat uh, anatomy that is being ground into the flour which is not always smooth, like refined flour or the bread flour. It is the outer part of the whole wheat, so that will have a lot of other particles apart from the refined flour. So basically what will happen is that that normally pokes uh, the gluten structure and it doesn't allow the gluten structure uh, to work properly. So the best case scenario, I would seriously suggest there is one more uh, way. Uh, you cannot properly call uh, whole wheat bread if you want the bread to be very big and it has to be more structurally similar to a regular loaf of bread. Uh, you can make a smaller bread uh, that is uh, uh, partly raised if you're going for very, very natural process. Uh, uh, unlike uh, you use a different uh, specialty wheat flour where all these uh, requirement are fulfilled by the flour manufacturer telling that it is fit for bread making. And that is one way if you're dedicatedly uh, uh, purchasing some whole wheat flour fit for bread making, probably definitely they would have added a lot of additives that will support the gluten formation and air trapping and, and uh, the yeast will obviously uh, sustain more comfortably trapping bubbles of uh, uh, pores into the bread and your bread comes out very well. But definitely if you are using a very natural uh, whole wheat flour, you will not be able to get a complete a perfect loaf of bread if you are using it 100% as such because unless or otherwise the particle has to be super fine whole wheat flour. If you are able to get a super fine whole wheat flour, it will support a lot in the process of bread making because there won't be any fine uh, outer endosperm that is in a different uh, sharp pop particle so that your uh, uh, whole wheat bread uh, gets raised up much better. That is one way to think about. But if your wheat flour is very normal or a medium quality or uh, something that is available in the market, not fit for making the bread, probably uh, that will be a little bit of challenge because above certain elements, it will be very tough. Okay, fine. The next step is to add extra gluten to uh, you know support uh, 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 the gluten structure a little bit more, but still uh, to be very honest, if you are taking the whole wheat and grinding it to a super fine flour, uh, probably that will help. But if the flour is of normal quality, uh, which is not a, bread making whole wheat flour, then uh, raising the bread would be a problem. So you have to uh, obviously buy the best uh, quality of wheat flour. That will definitely support. And definitely uh, the time for resting, time for knockback, uh, uh, the moisture content all plays a very, very vital role. Um, the dough cannot be as uh, soft as uh, 
a regular uh, refined bread uh, dough it has to be a little bit more harder than the regular refined uh, 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 bread refined flour bread dough so that it also adds a little bit more strength to it no matter what but i normally suggest uh, open type uh, uh, bread uh, is more preferred when it when you go to a, a whole wheat uh, bread flour so that it doesn't matter you don't have to get a proper square shape or something like that otherwise some people do uh, sometimes uh, the bread might be a little heavy if you are expecting a perfect square uh, uh, loaf uh, which will also be of little more higher density uh, because the pores in a refined flour can be little you know sparingly away and uh, uh, the air trapping is more uh, comfortable when the yeast eats the sugar and uh, gives out the co2 the gluten formation is fantastic in a regular uh, refined flour or we call it a maida flour a bread because it is purely uh, a refined flour there is no external endosperm of the wheat that is present in this uh, pure uh, refined wheat flour uh, that is there but when the endosperm is present definitely that has a different uh, uh, cellular structure and uh, different particle shapes and sizes that normally pokes the uh, gluten um, formation and uh, that normally pops open the bubbles of uh, gluten and naturally the rising process will be you know declined uh, when it comes to that and you have to use uh, industrial grade whole wheat flour you have to buy in bulk and it has to be super fine and um, though it is not refined it has to be super fine uh, super fine uh, whole wheat flour in many places people call it a uh, brown bread because it is not a whole wheat bread because they add color to it and they also use the uh, bread flour or the refined uh, wheat flour so that it adds a little more strength uh, to it and uh, giving a good resting time for the dough adds more value use lesser yeast longer proving techniques adds more value um, these kind of uh, and uh, obviously bread improver uh, that can be added uh, to the uh, whole wheat flour that adds a little bit of more support for the yeast uh, to sustain um, there are other elements uh, like this which which also adds uh, value to the wheat flour uh, to create a better bread uh, definitely we, we cannot compare a refined flour bread structure to a whole wheat uh, a bread structure because they have a different uh, uh biology as an ingredient uh, that is what i would say okay is it, Chef, is it, i just uh, wanted to ask yeah, can please. we do a combination of uh, maida and wheat uh, is there a combination which we can do wherein uh, the wheat can be like more and mm -hmm. maida can be less and yes. will that result in a good wheat bread yes yes of course uh, definitely uh that, that is a more of a common practice many uh, many places they do they blend a proportion of uh, you know uh, refined wheat flour with the whole wheat flour because obviously the refined wheat flour uh, creates a better gluten structure uh, than the regular uh, wheat flour so when there is a blend obviously the strength of the dough is higher so when the yeast is breathing the you know uh, the by product of uh, co2 is uh, trapped and uh, we get a, a better structure obviously the dough the shape of the bread uh, the way it is being you know uh, baked we obviously get a better structure of uh, uh, bread we can definitely blend we can also make a separate dough wheat and uh, uh, maida we can make a different separate dough and we can have a marble bread for instance or we can also have a blended dough bread uh it will add a uh, more supportive structure structural value to the bread definitely yes yes is there a is there a ratio which we should maintain when we are mixing two flours is there a ratio a standardized uh, ratio or there is there is there cannot be a standardized uh, ratio because the flour to flour uh totally the brand to brand uh, uh, strength of the gluten and the proportion of ingredient is different so we can we can easily start with 50 50 or 60 40 or 70 30 or 80 20 it also depends on the strength of the high gluten flour that you are using and and it also depends on the 
uh, particle fineness of the wheat flour that you are using. If your wheat flour is super fine, uh, your proportion of uh, uh, maida or the refined flour can be very, very less, very, very less comparatively. But when your uh, uh, whole wheat flour is not that super fine, we still have uh, micro granules of uh, super sticky like uh, substance uh, from the endosperm of the wheat. We obviously need to add a more proportion of maida or the refined flour to the dough or to make it a better bread. It, you can do a small R&D in batches every time. This definitely have to be tailored from brand to brand, uh, a different brand of wheat flour and different brand of uh, refined flour has a different strength. And uh, so obviously every bakery has to do a small R&D of proportions, but we, we can generally work on 70, 30 or uh, 60, 40 or 80, 20 or 90, 10, uh, a little bit of, uh, keeping that uh, uh, re refined flour proportion uh, on a much uh, lower scale as possible so that we can at least give more nutrient value to the bread. Thank you, Chef. Is there any brand that you would suggest? I mean, because it's very, uh, you know, close to Christmas and if we want to buy some yeah, wheat. Brand, uh, brand as such, uh, in this forum, I cannot suggest. We can, maybe I can, we can text uh, personally. I can give you a text. Okay. Okay. And yes, and another thing, open loaves of bread. Like say, we don't if the bread doesn't have to go into a tin, or it doesn't need to have a proper uh, square uh, slicing format. It if it is going to be open sub loaf or a open type loaf or more of a uh, hot hot crust loaves and things like that, we can try variety of other breads. Uh, without adding the fat, we can definitely try uh, different types of uh, breads that is different. Uh, all I said was about the square typical loaf of bread. Uh, that is what is difficult to attain when it comes to a whole wheat uh, flour. Otherwise, you can use a semi-spherical or a submarine type or a small rolls. Those kind of uh, a whole wheat bread can be attained to an extent that is more uh, uh, combined. Okay, fine. Um, Okay, anything else you can then and then you can ask for it. I'll go on with the uh, Christmas uh, uh, goodies and things like that. Okay. And um, yes. Uh, okay. And uh, even a small events can be organized uh, during the Christmas season. Uh, the event could be anything, say for example, uh, bake your own cupcake or some small event for the kids along with a kind of a decoration classes or something like that. So when you create an interaction, when you create a rapport between the public and your bakery or your brand, naturally people develop a kind of a attachment uh, to your brand. Uh, that, that, that is what is important for any bakery brands. So when uh, people are in your local town or in your place, in and around your place, get attached to your brand obviously they get to buy your product and uh, with a lot of beyond uh, uh, just the product uh, the goodwill is more important for any bakery uh, because uh, that is when people get attached to your brand uh, because there is always a competitor and you have to sustain in your market it is not always the product that speaks it is also the bondage that you create in your town, you need to get connected to the grid of people who buy the products or the community who buy the products or the age group who buy the product. That is very, very important. So we cannot sit simply inside your bakery and keep making wonderful products, uh, stacking them in the shelf and expect everybody to drop in and buy your product. Probably that happens in a place where there is no much competition or in a very remote locations of the world where you know, there is hardly one bakery for the whole town. Those kind of places are there. But Anna, it doesn't happen in India because <laughs> in every street, there is about five to ten competitions that is always present uh, for you. So you have to sustain. And uh, so you create that grid or you create that uh, bondage that is very, very uh, important. So you create the activity. Maybe you can create an activity with a, a Santa Claus dressed up person or you create an activity of a cupcake decoration competition for the kids or you create an activity that invites people and you have to do a propaganda for it. You cannot overnight think something and say morning or day after you need to just uh, 
propose a kind of a uh, you know activity that you want to obtain a lot of uh, crowd pulling uh, thing so you have to create a, a a hype much before let's say you start much before maybe at least now it is not too late this season is there so first week of january if you are planning some activity now you can start do the, doing the propaganda somewhere in the uh, mid uh, december stating that uh, new year special this competition for the kids or that competition for the uh, mother and kid or whatever you feel like doing so that really is the best way to you know uh, attract you create a table or you create a corner in your backyard or you even you can even go to a different location you can create a kind of outdoor activity with your brand banner in it it doesn't matter that you have a, your own bakery you can also be a home baker who can create a kind of a brand bakery and uh, a uh, brand poster and you can go to some other place and you can create the hype or you you create a cart or you sell in the sunday uh, market or you you go to a school or you go to a public uh, gathering location it could be a church or it could be anything anywhere anywhere uh, so so all the all the way uh, i'm trying to say is like you get connected with the public or you create a kind of a hype or you create an activity where people come and taste your product so that uh your presence is being noted uh, in the whole uh, competitive world that is what uh, i am trying to say and uh, anything else uh, related to uh, christmas and things like that uh, anybody having any kind of uh, it doesn't necessarily be a christmas uh, uh, related question it can be anything related to your product or uh, so if i had mentioned the question earlier yes please we all go by the uh, mostly um, out of india uh, menus right or recipes mm -hmm. what are some of indian authentic bakery items which we can concentrate upon like yes, authentic yes. indian bakery items yes 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 actually um, indian breads when it comes to indian breads it's mostly uh flat breads uh, that we are talking about there are uh, some interesting uh, products which we can infuse or impart a flavor indian flavor into the product and we can create a fusion that can also be uh, uh done i'll come to mr godwin's question next um so basically uh, products like shirmal shirmal is a wonderful very rich indian bread uh, that is being a, a kind of influenced from the uh, mughals uh, invasion into india shirmal is a rich uh, a bread with a lot of ghee a lot of milk a lot of uh, uh, saffron and uh, that's a wonderful flat bread either it can be baked directly into a baking oven or it can be baked in a tandoor and then there is this naan katai naan katai is a very interesting small uh, ghee based uh, cookies uh, flavored with uh, elaichi um, or you can induce this uh, kesar flavor into anything or a uh, rasmalai flavor into a cake or you can induce a, a roast milk flavor into a cake or you can induce uh, a fusion a, a cheesecake uh, flavored with mango cardamom or a cheesecake uh, flavored with uh, some kind of a tandai or uh, things like that and that's indian uh, uh, flavors uh, are uh, more oriented towards uh, sweets where elachi uh, saffron pistachio and lot of nuts and dry fruit these are all the basic Uh, indian flavor which used into the indian sweets we can convert those products into uh, bakery it's, it's a fusion is totally up to you say for example you make a nice bread dough you make a nice bread dough and the bread dough is completely done and before proving you can sprinkle inside some laddu broken laddu into it and uh, you can make that bread into a big mass or a a uh, small dough and uh, let it proof and when you bake it and take it and when you bite it while well, uh, we, we 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 have created a fusion here right now right away so it's totally up to your uh, 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 knowledge to impart into the product and definitely when it comes to, i don't have to say anything about chocolate to you because you are already the master in it and you have already created a lot of flavor in it. so that is something like that and uh, coming to mr godwin's uh, questions when offloading bread inside a closed in off the oven it will opening the cover of the bread immediately i notice the bread uh, shrinking uh, is this is a technical explanation yes uh, yes uh, mr godwin has asked a question the bread shrinks uh, when the bread is being taken out uh, 
uh, from the oven. Uh, this, we call it a fault. The common term we use, if there is any fault in the bread, we just call it a fault. And uh, this fault could be anything. Say, for example, if it is a, having a sunken center, sunken center, there is variety of reasons. Say, for example, uh, the bread is taken out from the oven too fast. This is one reason. If the center is not cooked, obviously, the bread is not left to bake for the right time. So uh, it is taken out. That is fault uh, reason number one. The oven is too hot and the bread is baked for a short time. That could create the same thing. Or the oven is too cool. It means, say, for example, if the size, depending on the size of the loaf, if it has to be 180 or 190 or 170 or 180, it has to be in the optimum temperature so that the heat penetration is good. And it also depends on the oven. Say, for example, if it is a blower oven, normally the best oven for the bread is the rotary oven. Um, obviously, it's okay to have a small oven, deck ovens and things like that. Why I'm talking about the rotary oven is that uh, the mold rotates at the same time. Uh, the air penetration is even and the heat disbursement is even all along the tin. The heat is uniform all over the tin of the bread mold. So it is uh, fantastic, uh, fantastically baking. Uh, it's okay to have a deck oven where the lower temperature and the higher temperature has to be moderated in such a way and it has to be baked to an optimum time, let's say uh, 35 minutes or 40 minutes or 30 minutes, uh, depending on the size of the uh, a bread mold and one more thing if your dough is too loose in the sense if every dough needs a certain amount of water if the dough is too loose then uh, the bread being uh, too high i mean if it is raised high after proofing and if it is kept inside the oven and taken out probably it needs a lot more strength for the gluten to stand this could be one reason and the reason could be another there's another reason i would tell you even if the flour strength, strength of the gluten in the flour, in the dough is lesser, that could also be one reason. And say, for example, if you are approving the uh, trays of uh, bread in a trolley, and if you're moving the trolley, if there is a shake in the trolley, that could also be a reason. And if there is a shake out from the oven, okay, it's okay, you uh, put the bread uh, tin in one place, and uh, you at least uh, release the top lid of the uh, 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 bread so that the steam vents out and if it is when a little bit cool for some time you have to invert the bread so that it doesn't sweat all around uh, that is there yeah so how to promote home bakery business fantastic <laughs> okay uh, home bakers there's a lot of home bakers here uh, so home bakers okay fantastic so you all home bakers have to think globally but act locally uh, so you have to think yourself like a proper bakery. Uh, at the same time, you can, uh, you know, impart the strategies like home bakery. That is totally fine. But at least you should have your own standard in terms of product. You should be super perfect. Like I know you should be. And then when it comes to uh, promotions, uh, the best way and the obviously most comfortable way you cannot do a direct promotion because you're not present in the eyes of the uh, guest where on the street or probably you're not visually straight in touch. So obviously the best and the only way is to reach each and every uh, clients uh, that whom you think are the target. The best way to reach is only two way possible. That is direct contact and indirect contact. Direct contact is through a medium Let's say you're creating a propaganda in terms of, uh, you know, marketing scale content like notice or menus or brochures or pamphlets. You go to some forum, you distribute or you go to, you call a newspaper guy to promote or you put in your pamphlet, you do the thing. These are all the very basic things uh, that you do. Then you should have a definitely very strong digital presence that is very very important because i am seeing on a day to day and i am following a lot of uh, home bakers in instagram because uh, we cannot or i cannot i don't do i don't do underestimate uh, their skills they have got a fantastic skills as good as a professional i've i i in fact some are even superior as a, a, a professional and uh, their 
Instagram presence or Facebook presence or a digital content presence, uh, having their own website. All these things uh, creates a consolidated optimization of their presence in uh, you know websites in in the online portals and things like that. So that adds a lot of value to their product because they can uh, showcase their product uh, with photograph. They can give offers, promotions because. Uh, that way people really follow uh, your presence in your town, at least in the way or the, in the wingspan that you can reach. Uh, there, there will be a kind of a grid that you can reach to the maximum. If it, is, it could be three kilometer or five kilometer or your old town, all you have to do is definitely give a good uh, branding. That is very important. You have to create yourself a lot of uh, branding content when it comes to your stickering or a box packing, you should have your dedicated, uh, it could be anything, ribbons or box or bottles or bags, whatever, whatnot that goes into a bakery uh, store, all those contents you should be having. At the same time, you should also have a lot of digital presence with photographs, small Insta Instagram reels and small videos. You can post it to your website or Google or those things. Those presence adds a lot of value and definitely you go to different forums. You have to be connected with the different forums. It could be anything, Home Bakers Forum or where, where your town eats or whatever the Facebook community, different uh, forums. Uh, uh, you can get yourself connected and you have to constantly uh, do a propaganda and pitch in your videos, pitch in your uh, uh, photographs with your branding, with your branding. That is very important so that people get that brand into their mind they have to buy heart your brand before they buy heart and taste your product of course your product could be exuberant but before people taste your product they definitely need to know that you're present near them or you're present somewhere in the town so that they can at least try to reach them and they try to reach them when it comes to that they should there should be a most convenient way for them to reach to you uh, it could be simple WhatsApp or phone number or on call, or you can use different types of uh, uh, product uh, delivery modes or bikers, this and that, so that your products can easily reach them. Next comes your price factors and things like that. Even that adds more value to your product. Uh, you target your audience, your audience profile, and according to them, you price your product so that you create a kind of a community for yourself and your product and your brand. That is how you promote as a home baker. Okay, fine, cool. That is about that. Anyone else having some interesting questions so that uh, I can so go on? We have uh, Purnima Gautam's question. Okay, sorry, I missed it. Oh, sorry. Okay, questions. okay. how can I keep berries and raisins from sinking to the bottom of the cake and uh, muffins? Oh, it's a fantastic uh, question. Um, I will give you a very uh, two, three techniques that you can follow. Okay. Uh, your recipe will have some flour. Your recipe of cakes and fruit cakes will have some flour. And the best way is uh, two way of doing it. If I, because I don't know your recipe, there is two way of doing it. If your recipe is very, very delicate recipe, the best way to uh, keep your uh, nuts and uh, 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 dry fruits sinking down is to wash it nicely before adding it to your product and then dust some more flour to your product so that this flour is coated all around your nuts and dry fruits so that when your recipe is done, finally you mix this flour coated uh, 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 nuts and uh, uh, dry fruits to the product and uh, allow it to bake. So before the sinking of the nuts, the flour around the nuts and the dry fruits will capture the moisture and other ingredients in the cake and will hang uh, in the cake. It doesn't sink down. This is for a very, very delicate recipe. And when it comes to a mid-level delicate recipe where the batter is quite thick, quite thick, not so uh, delicate, all you have to do is just include all your dry fruits and nuts uh, uh, with the flour uh, while sifting along with your baking powder and things like that. 
and then add it to the recipe that is one way to go about another thing uh, your temperature is also very very crucial and uh, your oven is also very very crucial the oven cannot afford to have a uh, serious vibration uh, deck oven a convection oven is uh, good for this kind of thing and you can also make your recipe a little bit denser you can reduce the fat a little bit and increase uh, your sugar and flour a little bit higher so that that adds gives more strength to hold the berries and uh, nuts uh, and raisins in your cake before it sinks down uh, that that can also add more value to the product uh, that is how you uh, try to you know uh, and you can the, even the dry fruits and nuts you can cut it into small bits that can also add more value uh, that is how you retain the nuts and fruits in the middle of the cake yes, yes uh, my contact detail yes i will uh, post it uh, if you are in the part of the group i think you can contact uh, mr vishwa and maybe i can also ping my number in this uh, uh, so that you can contact me at the end of this uh, uh, session that is fine okay yeah. anyone else any interesting questions okay fine i think everyone as uh, being a pastry or a chocolatier or a, a baker and uh, bakery business owners you must be getting ready for your christmas uh, it's a great time with you and uh, in this session thanks for uh, dropping by and being present anything uh, you can uh, ping me directly and this is my number that i have just uh, posted um, in the group you can ask my any questions directly to me that can also be done and uh, anything else uh, so we have one more question directly in the group sir okay uh, yeah so now you can answer this question for purnima's gautams then i'll come to that okay fine that's cool uh, uh, it's very simple baking powder will have a dry form of acid to it and a carbonate to it that is what is a baking powder so when you uh, get the baking powder all you have to do is uh, take few drops of uh, water and put the baking powder inside and you see the effervescence of the baking powder uh, if there is too much of bubbling and uh, fizzing and uh, things like that it means your baking powder is active and if it is not that bubbling or that uh, uh, you know fizzing probably uh, it is not active but it is always wiser whenever you buy a baking powder as new you try and you should also have your standard way of testing it take a spoon of water when it is new you drop the powder and you see the fizz and you keep that in your memory so that whenever uh, time goes by you can try that same say, same strategy so that when the fizz is not that much it means your baking powder has gone old it is better to replace and moreover baking powder also activates a lot more better when it goes into the oven when the heat when there is heat and when it is uh, treated properly and uh, my one more suggestion whenever to some cakes to some cakes whenever you are trying to add baking powder uh, you can add a little bit of uh, baking soda that is cooking soda that is plain uh, sodium bicarbonate that is one thing that you can add a little bit and you also add a little bit of acid in different forms like lemon juice or yogurt or curd or whatever forms so that that also adds more value to your cake and that will have a different uh, uh, crumbly nature uh, this suits very well for uh, cakes with fruits and especially when you make some nice dark uh, bourbon chocolate cake when you add this uh, uh, yogurt or a curd to the recipe along with the uh, baking soda it will alkalize your cake and your uh, dark chocolate cake will become even more darker uh, that will add more value to your uh, cake and whenever you make a dark chocolate cake you also add definitely uh, some uh, real melted chocolate to it uh, so that uh, that real melted chocolate along with your cocoa powder which is alkalized or non alkalized you add uh, some yogurt or a curd to it or lemon juice to it along with baking soda 
that will create a kind of a very interesting uh, reaction to it and that gives a very rich uh, a dark uh, chocolate cake and that also works very well for banana cake uh, that gives a rich brown dark uh, we call it a maillard's browning reaction that normally happens uh, for banana and apple and things like that that will induce a maillard's browning reaction that will give a very rich and uh, flavorful cakes uh, that is one hint that i can give you now okay thank you so that's fantastic anything else anyone else uh, yes sir okay so we got one question in whatsapp yes so what it is like when the like during christmas and new years mm -hmm. the orders and demand will be on higher side yes we get uh, the <clears throat> bakeries get more number of orders yes so if we are not able to handle it mm -hmm. or we are rejecting the orders mm -hmm. so how to overcome it? what yeah. all can be done to avoid that fantastic that's a fantastic question uh, me working in uh, some restaurants and some bakery and some confectionery the strategy we normally follow in a place like that some places i've seen i've seen a number of bakery uh, earlier they faced this challenge they will have a lot of orders pouring in the best way to tackle is you cut down a lot of products which is normally present in your bakery which is not that fast moving it means let's say you have a sku of about uh, 200 products or 100 products in your bakery or uh, in your display or 50 products you cut down somewhere about 25 or 20 products during the season especially we start doing that one or two day before the christmas and we finish it or we keep the same menu till the first week of january with a restricted menu we will keep only 20 or 30 variants because we know our clients are going to come to our bakery so we will keep a restricted menu but we will bulk the menu in the sense we will do it in more volumes we will do in multiple batches let us say we want to do just uh, in a bakery the plum cake and the fresh cream cake is moving higher we will do that in large volumes and we will stack it up instead of doing 200 sku each 10 10 10 10 that will consume a lot of time and effort instead of that remove last uh, 10 low selling products let's not waste time in that instead of that hike the volume of making the top 10 products or top 20 product we can definitely ration your number of product. Ninga and the Purulala on the Yella Purli on the Kami Panit, top twenty, Nala Muagra Purla Matto, Nare volume la Pani stack Pananga. Especially if you can do some dry cakes, dry cakes have a better lifespan. Sometimes you select the number of product which is having a better lifespan and you do it one or two days before so that that stays. For at least a week time, so that yedu me illa and rathiki idiyal mangi to pongaanga. Anna mariyu oru situation boru. So you should plan different types of product. Fresh products being made on the same day, being sold on the same day. Then there should be some set of product being made on a day and it stays for a week. And you add more value added product so that you cut down the least selling product. If as if for example normala ungu oru bakery la vandu, you normally keep uh, twenty types of cakes and 20 types of pastries, 20 types of cookies and things like blah, blah, blah. You cut down all those things. You keep a very restricted rationed menu, especially you call it a Christmas menu and you call it a rationed menu or Christmas menu, whatever it is, so that you sell the most selling product in bigger volume rather than wasting time in preparing the least selling product and wasting your manpower and time and creating and stacking. It will move. It will move. It will move. Nalla muara product, nalla ve muara. That is my strategy. Where do cakes and cupcakes sink in the middle sometime? Yes, uh, cakes and cupcakes uh, sinking in the middle. Abdina, the there is a lot of reasons. Obviously, underbaked. So best way, nena cupcakes. Ninga poram bode when you are going to fill the cupcakes. What you have to do is you don't heat the cupcake just like that. You create a crater in the center of the cupcake so that when it is hyped. It is not uh, 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 uncooked in the center and the rising is also smooth and there is a smooth concave effect. That is one thing. And the center needs more cooking time and heat because the outer cooks first. The heat 
entering into the cupcakes taking longer time in the mari situation irundaduna definitely it means that you have to lower your temperature my personal strategy na solra or basic ana pound cake 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 it means 500 g flour 500 g egg 500 g sugar and 500 g of fat the basic uh, pound cake or whatever the recipe is idukku vandu paathinga na konjama neenga flour extra va add panninga na this problem could be resolved a little bit that is one way and 160 degree is my personal baking time for cupcakes that is a very lower temperature compared to other cakes but lower temperature la konjam prolonged time kudukumbodu the heat penetration is better and the outer coloring is also lessened a little bit so that is one strategy that i would suggest you to follow and especially the fat enna mari fat use pandreenga that really matters if you are using butter and things like that definitely you need to reduce a little bit of fat butter and you can add a little bit of margarine to it that is one way to think about or you reduce still reduce the butter add incre- increase sugar increase flour and uh, increase you don't have to increase here these two if you increase and that will get uh, balance let's say for a for a 475 gram or let's say 475 gram of uh, uh, butter could you can use 500 gram of flour and 500 gram of uh, sugar and you add a little bit of moisture milk or some water to it uh, so that there is a little more moisture and the egg remains the same in the recipe or even you can reduce the egg by one one egg or two eggs or something like that okay i'm using cold pressed coconut okay uh, coconut oil obviously the density of the coconut oil the nature of the coconut oil is very very less so you have to use the sugar batter method sugar batter method it means you have to cream uh 33 grams of sugar with 33 grams of flour and one egg uh to get the best uh, finishing and you can use only little bit of coconut oil to it maybe just 5 ml of coconut oil to it so it becomes a sponge recipe not a pound cake recipe so you make a sponge recipe with a little bit of coconut oil even or 1 kg of sugar with 1 uh, kg of uh, flour with little bit of uh, cake gel add panna that adds more uh, support to your flour if you are not willing to add cake gel it is fine you increase the flour little bit of uh, but coconut oil we cannot use a lot of coconut oil you can use only lesser coconut oil and you have to use the sponge uh, sugar batter method recipe not the fat bat- batter method but muffins uh, cupcakes ela vandu normally vandu fat batter method where fat is being creamed with uh, sugar and then egg is added then it is emulsified and the flour is added and folded please don't follow that recipe when you are using oil like coconut oil you have to use the sugar batter method where sugar and egg is whipped very nicely uh, until it is fluffy and it is uh, holding you fold in the flour at the end and coconut oil in the end with some flavoring and some baking powder and you bake it that recipe will suit for you and okay that is also again eggless recipe oh that is a lot of filter for that okay fine so when it is an eggless recipe the best way my recipe i would sometimes start with uh, uh, things like condensed milk you know, i uh, cream together fat but the fat can be much lesser to the recipe let us say if i'm using uh, 400 ml of uh, condensed milk i would use if it is a coconut oil i would use only 100 or 150 ml of uh, coconut oil uh and then i would whip it nicely or i would try to aerate it with uh, definitely some yogurt and definitely baking uh soda instead of a um, lot of uh, baking powder of course baking powder is required but baking powder definitely we need an acid strong acids like citric acid or uh, lactic acid in the form of the yogurt and then you fold in the flour when you are folding in the flour there is one more last unconventional technique i follow i will brush the final batter in my palm i mean in my wrist uh, your body temperature will melt the fat and you see a translucent opaque layer if it is opaque it means your recipe is consistent and it has the strength to hold while baking if it is way too thin and way too melting and way too clean like water it means you have used a lot of fat and there is less flour you have to add little more flour to all you have to try is add more flour cut down the fat that the basic thing and uh, i think that should really work and we should definitely bake it in a very very low temperature cool oven like 155 or 160 degree uh, for a prolonged time maybe you can give a small 
uh, pan lined on uh, top i mean uh, butter paper lined on top so that the top doesn't get seriously colored while baking that is one way to go about yes next anything else yes sir uh, one last question yes please and uh, this question is from uh, koimbatur mm -hmm. so he runs a bakery mm -hmm. and uh, he is the owner of the bakery and uh, he has around 7 uh, to 8 employees okay 7 to 8 staffs mm -hmm. for uh, the complete uh, bakery mm -hmm. and uh, he is asking whether uh, during this season time mm -hmm. we should work on volume or we should work on profit and at the same time he mm -hmm. also wants to know that if you are working on the volume Mm -hmm. we should increase the uh, staff for time being or we can keep the retain the same same staff and uh, we can uh, do the business see uh, as being a chef you know the opinion enna nu pathinga if you are calling uh, uh, temporary staff you hardly pay them per day wage like 1000 rupees or maximum if he is the best chef you are calling uh, i mean at least to that uh, standard or whatever stand maybe 2000 rupees if you are calling him for 5 days you pay him 10000 rupees it also depends when it is a seven employee and if he is having a good business tappe kedaade they have to call one or two extra staff if he feels really avangaloda staff ku vanda adu overload aagudhu if he is feeling it is being overloaded then definitely extra staff call pandra tappilla this is one one thing that he can follow another thing uh, they can definitely when obviously when they can produce some product in bigger volume the profit will also be bigger uh, that is also there that is one way definitely it is straight away proportionate and we can also do another strategy by uh, reducing your profit margin a little bit or you can give a special price for the christmas season and the new year season or you can do the something but one way some places they say if i am reducing today every time they will ask okay forget it or you can give some complimentary stuff for that particular season if they buy a cake maybe you, you give them a small jar of cookies or whatever it is and the mari edha panikalam but my suggestion uh, new year christmas diwali whenever they feel pressurized obviously enna pananona na every year every year if you feel that you are having a better business வே பியாண்ட் முன்னாடியே அவங்க வந்து அந்த பேக்கரி ஸ்டாஃப் கிட்டயே சொல்லி வச்சிருந்தான் லைக் உனக்கு தெரிஞ்ச ஃப்ரெண்டை நீ கூட்டு வாப்பா உனக்கு தெரிஞ்ச ஆள்ட நீங்க முன்னாடியே சொல்லி வை ஆறு மாசத்துக்கு முன்னாடியே மூணு மாசத்துக்கு முன்னாடியே சொல்லி வைக்கிறவங்க எல்லாம் இருக்காங்க சீசனுக்கு மட்டும் எனக்கு ஒரு ரெண்டு பேர் என்கிட்டயே நிறைய பேர் கேட்டிருக்காங்க சில நேரத்துல ஐ கேன் சப்போர்ட் சில நேரத்துல ஐ கேன் சீசனுக்கு மட்டும் யாராவது ஒருத்தரை கொடுங்க ரெண்டு பேரை கொடுங்க நீ இந்த மாதிரி ஒரு அவங்களுக்கு தெரிஞ்ச ஸ்டாஃப் கிட்ட சொல்லும் போது ஈவன் தே வில் கால் அதாவது ஒர்க்ல இருக்கிறவங்க கூப்பிட முடியாது ப்ராப்ளி இஃப் தே ஆர் ஒர்க்கிங் இன் சம் அதர் பேக்கரி வி கேன் நாட் கால் தென் but if they are not working in some other bakery definitely those lean extra staffs who are trying for a new job probably they can come in and support uh, the ongoing bakery process during the season time alone uh, definitely no wonder nama avangalukku if your sale if, say for example if you are adding to employee obviously they can make uh, definitely or per day or 20000 to 30000 worth of goods na nothing wrong in paying them 1000 2000 rupees per day it is okay it is okay to call that is the best way to go about i i think adha na or mean pandraru nenaikira please ask him if it is right or wrong okay anyway anything else so the zaram bakers no okay. question emr wheat for breads and cakes okay i am not sure நான் தெரிஞ்சது தெரியுன்னு சொல்றேன் தெரியல தெரியல எம்மர் வீட் ஐ டோன்ட் கெட் இட் வெதர் இஃப் இட் இஸ் அ பிராண்ட் ஆர் இஃப் இட் இஸ் அ கைண்ட் ஆஃப் அ வீட் ஐ டின் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் தட் கொஸ்டின்ஸ் குட் யூ பிளீஸ் பி லிட்டில் மோர் கிளியர் இஸ் இட் அ டைப் ஆஃப் வீட் ஃபார் பிரெட் அண்ட் கேக் ஆர் இஃப் இட் இஸ் அ கைண்ட் ஆஃப் அ ஸ்பெஷல் ஸ்பீசிஸ் ஆஃப் வீட் ஆர் சம்திங் லைக் இட் குட் யூ பி மோர் ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் பிகாஸ் ஐ ஹவ் நோ ஐடியா ஹானஸ்ட்லி ஓகே டைப் ஆஃப் வீட் சாரி ஐ ஹவ் நாட் யூஸ்ட் பீங் அ கமர்ஷியல் பேக்கரி ஷெஃப் i am not so used to very uh, you know uh, tedious ingredient and romba kashtapattu or product being a commercial chef kudutadilla naanga we use the easily available ingredient we use 
the best product possible as a chef uh, we are more concerned with the presentation and the taste of the product uh, sorry to say sometime vandu pathinga na adoda inert nutritive values sela nerathula naanga gavanikka miss panidrom being a chef it is a natural process for us because at the end the sale matters at the end the commercial business matters and so it but it is nice to see a lot of uh, home bakers and people uh, taking time to you know uh, collect very high value ingredients like this and process that into a better product uh, to cater to their clients it's nice of you uh, if you have no more information on that please uh, share it to me because i have no idea about that particular wheat product i use the commercial uh, flours uh, to produce commercial products uh, we sell on a commercial large volume because at the end pathinga na nareya volume da matter a iruka na because the nareya volume a irukra business da vandu oru oru bakery vandu sustain panna vekkudhu romba tedious ana product pochuna engalukku konjam adu kashtama irukku okay whole wheat flour for my bakes oh fantastic i think uh, the, that uh, the mr or mrs could i have your name please sorry um, um they are using uh, they say that they use whole wheat flour for their uh, bakery product yes i have seen n number of bakers and i have also created a lot of uh, bakery that use uh, purely organic uh, flours and organic uh, 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 products completely without any a preservative without any added colors without any and there is also uh, miss manju here she has got a wonderful range of chocolate that uh, has uh, such uh, uh, high values yes i see a lot of people uh, with uh, interesting ingredient selection and uh, refined flour fantastic fantastic i think uh, uh, we should get more information from uh, miss vishnu priya uh, she has a wonderful bakery with a lot of uh, whole wheat uh, ingredients i believe that's fantastic ragaram fantastic fantastic okay cool um the, any anything commercial to make money you ask me i can definitely support you a lot <laughs> uh, of course uh, you are making you have your own client database that needs personalized service like uh, uh if you are very specific on your ingredient and very specific on your product very interesting ana romba complicated nu solla varala high value ingredient and uh, obviously ungalku raw metal cost will go high obviously you need to pitch it that way at the same time you are trying to cater a niche uh, uh, client profile because these days uh, at the end when the sometime vandu pathinga there is a challenge the people believe bakery product nale sari illa abindra or thought process poidranga it is nice that uh, uh, some people are adding more value to the bakery product and things like that uh i appreciate all those uh, people who put a lot of value to their bakery products thank you for supporting bakery industry and i would like to support more thank you uh anything else uh, to hear sir uh, thanks a lot for your valuable time and uh, we just want to take uh, more 5 minutes from you yes please please not yeah. a problem so uh, there is a question Mm-hmm. like uh during this session like season mm-hmm. uh we are uh, having many orders and we have good staffs and uh, even we put more staffs inside to <clears throat> make good market more good business during this time we are missing some safety uh, like food safety during the uh seasoning like uh, times so how to overcome that it is a very bit challenge to have like a monitor on that so is there any ways to overcome that food safety during this peak season because we will be in a hurry rush we need to give the orders we need to deliver the orders and in that matter we are losing food safety and uh, we are getting one or two feedbacks from our customer so how to overcome this okay cool okay um food safety challenge um when you will get a food safety challenge point blank a solano abrina if if at all uh, we cannot uh, follow the food safety standard 
only for the season it means that your bakery has to follow the standards throughout it doesn't matter if it is a, a new year season time or if it is a normal time and things like that there has to be some set standard that your bakery must possess by default immaterial if it is busy or not busy say for example or chinna situations for that the cleanliness of the bakery cleanliness of the bakery obviously there has to be a set procedure uh, the bakery units have to be cleaned probably two times or three times or four times depending on uh, the usage of the bakery in material what so when you clean and maintain your bakery there is a lot of unwanted foreign bodies that is uh, falling on the floor or falling on the table that will be eradicated on a periodical basis that is one thing and one more thing when you have a set procedure to do a product let us say uh, you are making a filling for your puff or you are making some interesting meat filling or a vegetable filling or some kind of a filling for your product there has to be a set standard you cannot just make the product or make the filling lay it on the table or leave it as such or use it whenever you feel like using it there has to be a set procedure when you make the filling it has to be filled in a tray it has to be cooled in a set place it has to be wrapped immediately or it has to be cooled on a forceful manner using a blast chiller or a freezer or a refrigerator in some way so that it is the temperature is being cut down because we need to maintain the temperature food safety when it comes to food safety there is a lot of issues that we can get it can be uh, chemical poisoning or food poisoning during because of uh, biological poisoning or uh, foreign body ingestion into the food or uh, the environmental hazards a lot of things have to be taken into consideration so if your bakery or if your production unit or whatever uh, kitchen you have you have to follow some standard from the beginning from the beginning which has to be full proof even during the very uh, stringent and heavy you know uh, working hours of these kinds and these times and things like that apart from this each and every staff have to be well educated with this all this issues he should be well educated or well trained uh, to you know eradicate these kind of hazardous situation they have to be informed with what kind of problems that we can get during food production process so they have to be constantly trained at least at least once in two month or once in three months you call some professional and train them so that they are well aware of the situation or at least during the christmas or high season at least during this time you call some professionals like that and give them a training or where could be uh, the problems could arise or you can call some professional ask them to do a physical audit in your production area so that they can point out uh, the you know uh, the uh, places where there could be hazards that could uh, create uh, that could be created uh, uh, during busy or peak hour situation so that can be eliminated in by you know before the more like a precaution is better than cure that can also be followed definitely uh, staff has to have the knowledge of food safety each and every staff has to have the knowledge of food safety otherwise there is one more strategy you have to have your supervisors who have to be well educated about the situation bigger units i have seen okay they will have quality stand quality controllers there will be fmb controllers there will be people who you know all or at least they will have even missionaries which does the process and things like that so food safety is very very important it is a good question that you have asked so obviously as of now the best way is to either train the staff train your supervisor create an audit before your season or constantly give a training for your kitchen staff they should have knowledge on all kind of uh, uh, hazards that could arise inside uh, a kitchen so that they uh, at least uh, do a prevention during the you know busy hours of peak hours that's the best way to go about yes sir so thank you so much mm -hmm. for your valuable time and uh, i think uh, all the participants here like have uh, asked your questions and uh, made a clear picture now how to run your bakery so we wish uh, more uh, sessions coming up through tai chennai 
and uh, we will be like connected together always we will bring more and more uh, knowledge sharing and uh, from as a very good uh, chef we will be having more sessions and we will share like share his knowledge to all so uh, merry christmas to all and a happy new year so we will be connecting very shortly and it will be announced in the whatsapp groups thank you uh, so much sir thank you chef thank you vishwa and the team thank you ma'am it's been a very informative session and uh, i think right time because we are all going through exactly. a busy season thank you for having this session thank you so much ma'am thank you all thank you for the time and uh, merry christmas and happy merry new year and happy new year to everyone yes 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 and any personal questions you can uh, connect with me as i have just given my number and uh, somebody has asked some questions uh, that's a bigger question to start start a bakery shop uh, they have to be present in our thai group for some time so that they learn a lot of input so that they can start a bakery shop that's the answer for that particular question for, from that uh, gentleman uh, thank exactly. you thanks a lot